The chair recognizes Senator Fred Mitchell. Thank you very much. Of the what? <laughs> the free PLP. I thought they were abolished, man. <laughs> well, they disappeared. <laughs> or you the last member left. Amen. I see. <laughs> very good, man. Um, you'll forgive me um, if I do a lot of talking this afternoon. I won't keep you long. Um, you know, I've been cooped up in my prison for a week, so I have plenty to say. I have no one to talk to, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the Bahamian people now. Um, I recall uh, Queen Eleanor in that famous film, The Lion in Winter, when the king decided to, well, he kept her in prison, and then he decided to keep the sons in prison, and she said, you know, a mother and her sons locked up in prison. What mother doesn't dream of that? <laughs> um, and uh, I've been an iconoclast most of my political life, and so forgive me if I interrupt the solemnness of this matter, but there must be some lightheartedness in any occasion, even though this is quite a serious matter. Uh, and I'm reminded of that expression which came out of the Second World War when <clears throat> there was uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And the commanding officer of this ship was trying to get one of the sailors to use the gun. And he was saying, but it's Sunday. And, you know, the Lord says, you know, you're not supposed to be working on a Sunday. And the, his commanding officer told him, you can praise God and pass the ammunition. So even as we are gathered here on this solemn occasion to deal with this matter, and I heard what Senator Hanfield said about no politics, you can do both. And they're not mutually exclusive. Because the essence of what we're doing here today the essence of what we're doing here today is the review jurisdiction of Parliament. Because stripped to its essence, the review jurisdiction of Parliament, of the executive's action. The Constitution, under Article 29, gives the executive the act, the power, at the stroke of a pen, to suspend fundamental rights. That's what is this is done. And it says, after a certain time, if you want to extend what the executive has done, you can come back to Parliament to have it extended. So, this is what I'm saying. This is the review jurisdiction of the exercise of that power. And since it is a review jurisdiction, then members ought to take the opportunity to say to the government what it has found out after it has exercised the power. And those of us who have this opportunity, only 16 of us and 39 or 38 down below, should not step away from that opportunity. That's the reason you're here, to do that, to speak, because you have the opportunity to speak and to take it seriously, as, as I think everybody uh, does. And uh, I invite, as I've invited the students who um, who are, or the younger ones who are members of our own party, I invite all Bahamians who are at this juncture to study what has happened. Because this is probably a once in a lifetime event. And I said to the younger ones who have been, who are at the University of the Bahamas, those who are studying public policy, you know, that's the leadership class of the country. Ten years or so, they'll be sitting in this very place. And they should use the opportunity of this event to study what is happening, to see what they would do in the circumstances. You know, when you become a minister of the government, ain't no time for ruminating. It's whether you have to make a decision. No time for guessing and so on and so forth. If you're a permanent secretary, the minister asks you, what's your advice? You can't be guessing. And the laboratory that you have is this that is going on right now, because there's no classroom for it. And since you have the opportunity, have, have, a, have a look at it and see uh, what is happening. Now, the 
So this, this, this is an important occasion. I want to take the opportunity, therefore, to read, if I might, into the record what the leader of the opposition has said is the position of the opposition with regard to this. So there's no confusion over this. I think the members who have spoken before me from my side have made it clear that there is broad support for the measures so long as they're consonant with the World Health Organization's best practices. And we have made a number of suggestions as to how things can be tweaked around the edges. And uh, I'm glad to hear it, notwithstanding, uh, notwithstanding the quote yesterday, I am neither moved or advised by brave. Now, that isn't helpful if we're reaching out to the other side. Because in fact, we need to work together. And you know, our country, I was told, says, manners maketh the man. Manners maketh the man. I understand. I understand. But I'm constrained to point it out. I'm constrained to point it out that that is not within the spirit of what we say we are dealing with. I also want to take the opportunity to bring to the attention of the government various things that have been pointed out to us. For example, the residents of Grand Key uh, say that quite apart from the real presence of the government being felt post-Dorian, today or yesterday, some technicians came from the telephone company and took down their last remaining communication, BTC, hole with the world. So they are now cut off from the world, but for an American who set up uh, a direct link by satellite or something which allows them to be on internet. And that has them quite concerned. So I bring it to the attention, because I gather, I gather BTC has a, has a presence, and BTC has been down since the hurricane. Alive was the only service, but now the BTC has taken down its pole. Alive is also gone. So I wish you would look into that matter for them. Also, when the Prime Minister spoke yesterday at his press conference, he indicated that there would be coming in the package of measures to support those who were in a cash crunch at this point in time, rental assistance. But we listened to the statement of the, for the finance minister today in the House. And unless we missed it, there does not seem to be anything which deals with rental assistance. So if, that's not, if that is something which you've overlooked, I wish you would look at that. Because I can tell you two or three calls who people are sick and worried to death because the landlord is saying, I want my money. And, you know, we know that I listened to my friend, the Minister of Education, who was quite upset because the Progressive Liberal Party pointed out this sentencing that took place for some people who were homeless. And we were saying, well, what is the policy of this? Because there was a statement made by you that, I'm sorry, by the Attorney General, that the homeless should shelter in place. I saw that myself in a video clip. But the press reported that some men in Abaco and Grand Bahama who reported that they were homeless were charged before the courts, convicted, sentenced to what seemed inordinately high fines, and which means effectively they're going to have to end up in prison. And I raise that again because a lady called me from Stanyard Creek in Andros just before this session to say that her brother was expelled from the place he was staying in Nassau because he was unable to pay the rent. So last night, two nights ago, he's walking on the streets trying to find some place to live. He's stopped by the police and arrested for violating the curfew brought before the courts, convicted, and charged $500.
So she's found a friend or somebody in Nassau who can provide the 200, but now she's got to find the 300. If he doesn't get it by the end of the day, he's in prison. Now, surely that can't be the policy. And, you know, of course, one of the things with proclamations, orders, and laws is they are a very blunt instrument. They're not, there are no nuances to it. And once you set a court upon a matter, they look at the law, they apply the law, and that's it. But surely, we can't mean to put people who are homeless in jail on the basis that they're violating a curfew. So I'd wish those two points, the question of homeless people and the rental assistance, are to be looked at. The question is also asked. The Prime Minister said that in the order, or oh, I think the order says, Mr. Attorney, the order says that roadside vendors are to, to cease. This does not apply, I'm advised, to people who sell newspapers. They're accepted. Uh, I understand. That's communications. Yes. Yes, I, I understand. But. But the farmers' markets are allowed to operate. Farmers' markets are allowed to operate. So, of course, the fruit and vegetable vendors now want to have some clarification as to specifically are they banned from selling their fruits and vegetables once they're outside the farmers' market. So that's the answer to that issue. And we, uh, in our parliamentary caucus have been talking about how is it possible notwithstanding the strictures that you've been advised to put in place by the uh, medical establishment how is it possible to keep economic activity at a minimum so that the strain on the government with regard to this is minimized All right. so again uh, the, the plea comes from those people who run restaurants and establishments at Arawaki and Potoski. They say, they say, they say, what is the difference between us being able to have takeout, takeout, and Kentucky Fried Chicken and Wendy's being able to have takeout? Well, you, you'll no doubt explain that. But I'm saying a case uh, is being made. Next point, licensing. I think someone has all mentioned, already mentioned that, or maybe it was we were discussing this across the table. I had, because my uh, vehicles are company owned, uh, I had no idea that since the order was in place and government offices were supposedly closed, that licensing was still going on until this was spoken about me in one of the communications to our party supporters and they said well i went last wednesday and licensing was going on it took me two minutes to get it done but the impression was that government offices had closed down now the 31st looms which is tomorrow and everyone who's born in march and everyone who has a company or in a non-governmental organization and government vehicles, by the way. Now, I know this because, as I said, I've, I've been engaged in activism all my life, and I've caught government vehicles in May and June and July. With the, my view is, even with regard to these by uh, banks, where the bank is saying, oh, well, we'll agree that you don't have to pay for three months, but, you know, uh, when you come back three months later, you'll have to pay the accrued interest and so on and so forth. And I, I was, I've been thinking about this, and I was saying to myself, I think that with all of these matters, the licensing issue I just talked about, the issue of the banks, is that in the terms of the order, in the terms of the order, uh, I'm sorry? Oh, I see, yeah. It's the maritime flag. Yeah. Is it right? Yeah? Okay. Um, but in, ter in terms of... 
of the, the, the order, it seems to me that what is necessary is for a specific provision to deal with this so that should there be some dispute, there is some legal cover for the person post the emergency order. Because, you know, a bank can say, oh, yeah, don't come in and pay and so on and so forth. And you know how they go by the time, three months from now, they'll say, emergency? What emergency? I don't remember an emergency. You didn't call me. And then, of course, when you're calling a bank here, you're now calling Trinidad. So, you know, and they have to send a message and so on and so forth. And, you know, what, that's one of my pet peeves with this thing is, is perhaps we're going to have to have local... I'm calling it local content laws. I don't think that's quite it. But what it means is that consumers and banks in the Bahamas ought to have a right to have a physical presence in Nassau or in the Bahamas to speak to face to face, face to face, and not this, you know, I call some call center and they relay a message and so on and so forth. I told you the example before when I was speaking of, uh, of B BTC. So uh, I wish that the Attorney General might turn his attention to, to that as well. Um, so I said, therefore, I'd like to uh, just enter uh, this, these words into the record that were spoken by the leader of the opposition yesterday, if I may. And he said, we wish to recognize the work of all of our frontline soldiers in the fight against the COVID-19 virus. And we thank all the doctors, nurses, EMS personnel, police officers, defense officers, social workers for the yeoman's job they're doing in caring for the sick and keeping our nation safe. Thank you all from the bottom of our hearts. I wish to take this opportunity to say what our position is with regard to this matter. This national emergency is like no other. We are cooperating with all the measures that are put in place. We understand that they are in keeping with the World Health Organization's best practices. We're asking all our supporters and persons of goodwill to do their utmost to follow those best practices. At the same time, we believe that there some, should be some additional public education measures that are necessary to bring the public along with this matter. We are at war with the virus and not at war with our citizens. And we need to make the case each day to show why we are taking the measures we are taking. And we, from our side, pledge to lend our hand in doing so. We are concerned about the poor. We think that there are some measures which need to be taken to address the social needs of our people in this emergency and to ensure that everyone has food, income protection, mortgage and debt relief, and rental support while we are going through this emergency. As the economic fallout from COVID-19, the COVID-19 crisis intensifies, we continue to call for economic relief for the most vulnerable and marginalized amongst us who continue to be hardest hit by the crisis. I have suggested to the Prime Minister to negotiate a reimbursement plan for the payment of salaries by employers to their displaced workers to avoid interruption with their salaries. I think that's being worked on. Some of the qualifying conditions for NIB benefits should be revisited as workers in the retail sectors continue to complain about access and eligibility for unemployment insurance benefits. The economic relief package to small and medium-sized businesses should also be revisited to include public grants to stave off any further stalling of the economy. The opposition takes the position it should have access to the medical expert advice that, uh, that the cabinet is privy to, that advice that is informing the government's policy on the COVID-19 crisis. Now, I say that because I understand that you've said since then that uh, there's a promise for the experts to meet with the opposition this, during, the, during the course of this week, is it? During the course of this week, right. And I understand that the House is now adjourned to Monday to anticipating the possibility that the advice may be that this may have to be extended. Or, or contracted, depending on that. And the other thing uh, that he issued, uh, talked about was the travel restrictions imposed under the emergency powers and the question of Bahamians abroad. And this was, uh, I think, sorely misrepresented by the reporter who asked this question yesterday, who predicated her question on the phrase, the, pr the leader of the opposition said that, um, that the borders should be open. In fact, he was speaking to the question of 
uh, the, of whether or not a Bahamian should have the right to return in, the cir in these circumstances. And also um, the question of, I think there's a doctor right now, there's a neurosurgeon who is a permanent resident here, if not a, a, a citizen, who's also trying to get home and is unable to do so. So uh, that, that is something, some, something you ought to address. So those were the statements uh, he made yesterday. I also, uh, before sitting down though, would wish to join with uh, Senator Dotson in speaking about Sister Cecilia Aldrey. Um, I call my interaction with her and the nuns at the convent here to be kind of Dickensian in character. In the sense of those of you who've read Great Expectations, you know it's a long book and Dickens wrote these as serials in a newspaper. Um, so it stretches over a long period of time. But what happens is there are always these moments where people disappear and they come back into your life and then there's surprises and so on and so forth. And I, I think of that uh, in connection with her. Uh, Hubert Ingram and I, the former prime minister, were on a tour of the Bahamas, I think uh, uh, circa 1991, uh, doing uh, some um, lectures on lectures on the Constitution. Well, you know, someone someone passed me today. Someone passed me today and said, "May the force be with you." I I, I hadn't heard that. That's right. No one said, "May the force be with you." I said, "Boy, I haven't heard that in a long time." But anyway, we were so one of the stops was Bimini, and uh, Sister Aubrey was the principal of the Catholic primary school in Bimini. And um, I said to her, I said, look, uh, we're doing these lectures. Uh, can we come by in the morning and speak to your kids at the school? And she said, fine, come, come over. So we went over to the school and both of us told them the stories about the Constitution, how it came about, so on and so forth. So uh, fast forward a couple of years onward and Mr. Ingram becomes the prime minister of the country. And I, and I hadn't seen her in ages. And one day I ran into her to a, what, some social gathering. And she said, you know, I've got to thank you, by the way. I said, well, what for? She said, I had no idea when you were introducing me to him that I was going to be introduced to the next prime minister of the Bahamas. I said, well, <laughs> that's how it goes. That's how life is. And we always had this as a kind of private uh, joke. My regret is that for the last year, two years, three years, I've been promising myself and my another colleague to go to the convent because they really cook good bread and the meals are excellent, to have a meal with all of the nuns. And every time I see them, I say, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. And now, of course, she's passed away. A very pleasant lady. Uh, and um, we will miss her. Um, she's been through a lot with this illness. And um, she's in a better place, I am, I am sure. And uh, so with, with those remarks, I say that the opposition, the minority, has its say. The government has its way. And so these are the government's decisions on which they will stand or fall. Our role is to provide what is called critical support. And critical support means keeping an eye on all matters for and on behalf of the Bahamian publics. Free speech is not suspended. And I say again, those of you who are in this place, do not, do not give up your right to speak freely. The only way there can be free speech is to speak freely. I think I covered everything I want to say. And uh, anything else I need to say? Looks like, no, 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 no. No, no, man. No, not responsible. They're responsible. Don't come in this. Speak freely. Speak freely. If, you, if I do, do or say something, you know, the moment I start trying to telescope what I say, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Speak freely. 
And if somebody doesn't like it, they can say, you know, they call, they call me all kind of things. So, you know, I'm used to that. Don't matter to me. You just speak freely. And now, you know, I'm 6'6". Six, six, I just don't care. So, <laughs> you know, don't matter to me. Yeah. Yeah. So you speak freely. And no, well, I can tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'll tell you. I, 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 I uh, passed uh, by social services uh, today. I hope I can repeat this in this gentrified company. Um, and these women were all gathered waiting for service, uh, services, uh, services at social services. So the, yeah, right. Boy, they sent all kinds of messages to me, man, of what they can do and what they want to do and so on and so on. I say, Jesus, for, 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 for old man, man. <laughs> I say, <laughs> Uh, uh, I just, you know, I said, I was like, like my ma says, just smile and say thank you. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Bless you. <laughs>